so I haven't really been watching a lot of TV over the past year or so, but then I keep getting recommended this one show called Nathan For You, which is a docu-reality kind of TV show, and I decided over the past week to watch the show, and I ended up binging it over the past week, and I saw all four seasons, including the incredible season finale of um, Finding Francis, which kind of acts like a standalone film to some degree. I really love the show. For those who are unfamiliar with it, the, the normal conceit is that Nathan is this businessman who, a business school graduate who is being advised, who is advising these small businesses who are trying to make their, who are some, most of them are really are having a hard time with their business and they're trying to find a way in order to maximize their future profits to some degree. You know, they want to improve their business, whether it's marketing or with their product itself. So they hire Nathan and his crew and I think they, that it's, it, I think what they believe they're going into is some kind of makeover show. I think not really a makeover show, but just like a reality TV show that will help improve their business, which is very popular in the MTVs of the world. And uh, what they don't realize is that they're on actually Comedy Central, a comedy show where a lot of the comedy comes from the awkwardness of the interactions between the characters and Nathan and the outlandishness of the proposed business um, strategies that Nathan kind of brings out for them. And un common in the show is the idea that a lot of the business strategies that are they're not, they're not only absurd, but they are morally ambiguous. A lot of the time, in order to enact a lot of the strategies that Nathan suggests, they need to either break the law to some degree, they have to deceive their customers, they have to lie to their faces, they have to misrepresent their business, and for those are the majority of the ways in which um, the show kind of uh, tries to you know uh, have their have their um, how they make money and it's weird because what's funny about the show is not necessarily just because of that aspect of things but because a lot of Nathan's suggestions kind of do work to some degree like they're outlandish but then if you look at it on a purely immoral um, or amoral standpoint. Uh, if you forget all of that, while they may be impractical, they do kind of work to some degree. Um, and what is most fascinating while watching the show is the realization that in order to, for some people who in order you know when you are struggling as a business and you really want to just improve your current you know revenue flow and out and you know profits, there's a certain amount of moral standard that you are willing to compromise. And that's what the show, for me at least, when I was watching it, that's what it felt like it was exploring. It was exploring the degree to which one would be willing to compromise their values and morals in order to keep themselves sustained or keep their businesses sustained or even just help their business improve in you know, the future. And what you, I guess, it, I, I think what happens is that when you have all these big businesses and we have this assumption of sorts of that they're all evil, they're all evil corporations and they're all cutting corners in order to just, you know, make all this money, what you realize as well is that what you realize from the show at least is that even for small businesses businesses for each for the ordinary individual for each one of us if we were given the opportunity to do the same thing it seems like based on the show it seems like many people would be willing to do so would be willing to make that leap in order to you know make a profit uh Perhaps for most people, the reason why there's a difference between the big businesses and small big businesses is that the big businesses just have more um, tools to enact their uh, seemingly absurd propositions. But for Nathan's crew, Nathan has his own crew to help them do it for them. But uh, but you realize, you know, uh, we all have lines, it seems. And what's most fascinating about the show is that all the interactions are real. One of the funniest, for example, um, recurring elements of the show is whenever Nathan introduces his absurd um, idea and you kind of have a reaction of the face of the, of the customer, of the business owner. And you can see there, it usually has a mix of surprise. Um, sometimes they sadly look appalled to some degree, but eventually they go like, some, to some de varying degree, some people are more into it than others, but... Um, they they say something like that kind of makes sense or you know that maybe that will work or maybe let's try it. Obviously, it's it's also funny because to some degree you have to play into the whole facade of it all and that they are being filmed, so they can't really just 
um, to some degree, they probably believe that they should be acting in accordance to Nathan's rules or Nathan's. Um, it's a show. They have the the recommendation of Nathan has to kind of push through with what they probably will do, and they'll only, usually they say like we'll give you a shot for like we'll try it for a day or something, and for them it's like a low risk effort in order to get more publicity for their sh- for their show, uh, for their business, and as well as the possibility that it could be better, but. You know where do you draw that line because a lot of the things that they do are very very not, they're not even um ambiguous morally ambiguous really they're morally reprehensible <laughs> and uh it is uh a fun it's funny and it really makes you see yourself in their position and see how you kind of internally question to yourself like well what, what would i do that or would i be willing to do that for this and do i think that's a good idea or and I can understand the, the perspective of the small person because you think, well, all the biz- all the big businesses do this to some degree, manipulation and deception and all that stuff. So why shouldn't I be able to do the same thing if it'll work and everyone seems to be, you know, they kind of go into it and they accept it. So why shouldn't I be able to do it? And that's also a fair point to make. But, you know, it's a very pessimistic and cynical way to look at the world, although maybe a pragmatic one. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a very good show, very fascinating. Uh, Again, it reminds me of Review um, by For- Forrest McNeil, I think is his name. It's also in Comedy Central, but that is completely fictional. What's fascinating about Review is that these are real human beings that he interacts with. And uh, although, from what I understand from reading the behind-the-scenes stuff, is that uh, Nathan's lines are usually scripted, and he has a, a group of writers who kind of plan the um, pers- the possibilities of interactions and what nation should say or to have the f- funniest moment of sorts. But then all the real people are real people and they don't have any scripts. They don't know what they're getting into. And I've seen some of the back um, on Reddit. I've read some of the reports of like people they've interviewed and they found out how intricately uh, Nathan and his crew get them in and how much, you know, they just don't have any idea what they're getting into until they come up on the screen. It's a great show, I think. I loved it and what is so it ends on this thing called uh finding francis which is not like any of the other episodes in fact it can be looked at as a complete separate uh thing to the whole show uh it has nothing to do with the plot i was telling you about but to some degree you do get still get that same sense of looking into the humanity of the average human uh, average average person um also i don't want to spoil anything but the, the the it's about this guy who's a recurring um recurring uh character in the nathan for you series of sorts it's not a really a series but there's some recurring uh, ca- um, people who show up in the show and one of these recurring characters is a bill gates impersonator who they find out um behind the scenes has is like in his late 70s and he when he was younger he fell in love with this woman very very strongly fell in love with her but he had to leave um, his hometown of Little Rock, Little Rock, Arkansas. He had to leave because he wanted to pursue becoming an actor, and that ruined his. That kind of separated them, t- and he never kind of got into contact with her again. But he claims that he's in his late seventies when he said that when he fell in love when he was twenty, this was the greatest love of his life, and he should have married her. He has l- filled with lots of regret. So the last episode is Nathan, um, going with um this Bill Gates impersonator trying to find his lost love from the fifties who he hasn't kept up contact with. It's extremely humanistic, and the f- fact of the fact that everything's being filmed and it's real and it's sort of something to be a documentary, it weirdly reminds me of um, the Iranian new wave cinema. This is such a weird comparison, but it reminds me of like the Karastamis of the world and the Makmal Baha- <laughs> Makmal buffs. You know, um, in that there's there's a certain degree in which we're watching things that are supposed to be real well they are real supposedly but then we also don't know because things are constructed in a way that forms this very unique narrative and once you once the narratives of the the bill gates character starts to get start to get juxtaposed with the narrative of nathan for you's character nathan's character i mean uh nathan's fictionalized version of himself in the documentary which is also you know a movie it, it becomes confusing because again when you watch the show Nathan's definitely playing a character. He's playing a version of himself that isn't him. So when you get into this final episode and you realize that, you know, it's being reported as completely real and the guy seems to be real in all in all senses, but is Nathan still acting? Is Nathan... Is it still... Is it actually Nathan Fielder or is it the character that Nathan plays on the show? Because, you know, in the show, in the movie, he references the show, he references different episodes. 
he meets a, he made he meets a someone um in halfway through who he even shows episodes of the show to so you think well okay wait this is an episode of the show and he's openly showing episodes of the show to another human being and and it it's confusing when you think about the levels of reality which you know uh, it's it's a, it's a fantastic end to the fourth season and I don't know how he can really top it but uh, I am a big fan of it I'm a big fan of the show big fan of Finding Francis and if you you know don't know anything about it I'm gonna be one of the next few people rec- telling everyone I know about this show because it's a fantastic show and everyone should watch it so yeah Nathan for you a comedy central show hopefully comes back for fifth season.